Hey everyone, it's Lou Collins. Today I have got 10 genius ways to save your craft projects when you've made a mistake or maybe you've been avoiding using a particular technique because you're worried about it going wrong. So I'm going to share with you actually more than 10 because I've got lots of tips and tricks along the way too. So let's dive straight into the first one. Now there are lots of beautiful embossing folders on the market but maybe you've been gifted some and you don't have a die cutter machine or perhaps you absolutely love yours but you you don't want to get your die cutting machine out and you just want to emboss a tiny little bit well there are ways around this so I'm going to show you the first one and that's to just simply use pressure with something like a rolling pin so I'm going to place some cardstock or paper ideally you want to go for a lightweight paper because if it's cardstock you're going to need more pressure which without a machine you're going to struggle to do I'm going to use a rolling pin from the kitchen and I'm just going to press over this. Like I say, a lightweight paper is ideal. Now, if you struggle with dexterity or with putting pressure on the rolling pin enough, you can stand up, that will help you, but you can also actually stand on the project. No joke, stand up, take it to the floor, put it on the floor, put your foot on it, put pressure on it. Honestly, it makes an amazing difference. So let's see if we can see the emboss. So obviously the emboss is going to be lighter. It's not going to be as deep, unless you're super strong, of course. But this is still able to then be inked. You can use your spritzes on it and you can really show up the detail still. Here's a piece that I distressed with some ink earlier. I'm going to be using this in a grungy project, but I did not emboss this with a die cutting machine. I used exactly the technique that I just showed you. Now, another way to use your embossing folders that doesn't take much pressure at all is to simply ink them. I'd always suggest inking both sides of the folder. So I'm going to take a water-based ink and just smear it over the side where you can see the detail and then again the side that highlights the background of your image. The reason I do both of these is because you are going to get different looks and you may prefer one to the other so you might as well do both at the same time. So just placing my paper inside there carefully and pressing down. Now you're not going to get the image that you can see here but you are going to get another beautiful image. I'll show you in just a second but I'm just using my fingers to squeeze between the two. Now, just so you know, this is not really going to work with 3D embossing folders. There's so many layers, your ink's only ever going to touch the very top one of those unless you really apply lots of ink into the grooves and then, of course, lots of pressure, which is what we're saying we don't have. So squeezing around all the detail and then reveal. So on one side, we have this beautiful image. That's the background inking. And on the other side, we have similar but not quite the same as you can see the background is perfectly clear and we've really picked out the detail so there's my first tip for using an item in your craft room that you may not be using because you don't have all the tools for now tip number two is about removing adhesive so we've all done it we've made a mistake on a card we want to peel off a layer for whatever reason and it's stuck and it's pulling the cardstock from behind it's just making a mess and we feel like we need to give up and start again but you don't definitely try this tip first so this card has been stuck down with a double-sided tape and this card has got layers stuck down with foam pads or foam tape it's all very similar and I'm going to release both of these now these cards were actually made months ago so in theory they should be well stuck by now and not coming off but I'm simply going to use a heat tool obviously be aware if you've got any heat embossing on your card or your project that you could remelt that embossing while doing this technique so I'm simply going to start off with my heat gun behind my card on the reverse from where the adhesive is this way I'm not heating the front of my card and causing any damage to the inking and the embossing that's on here and as you can see already this is starting to peel away once one corner has started to lift you can just tease that then you can take your heat gun and you can put it underneath and now my card base is separated from the front so this could be for multiple reasons but either way you can then restick this or throw it and reuse your card base and exactly the same applies when you're doing this with a foam tape too. So again, heating from the reverse. I'm just going to warm this up until I see that start to lift and I can get the heat gun underneath there a little bit more. As you can see, there's no residue left on the cardstock either. Tip number three is all about stenciling colours onto dark colours. So sometimes you may find that you're ink blending through a stencil onto a dark colour 
isn't as vibrant as you expect it to be, even if you've used a pigment ink. Now, if you don't know the difference between pigment inks, dye inks and hybrid inks, make sure you check out the video just here that explains all of those for you. So to make the stencil really stand out, what we're going to do is apply a white layer first and then put our colours over the top. I'm going to do this with texture paste, but I'd always recommend, first of all, you spritz the back of your stencil with something like a repositionable spray or a stencil glue. Once your stencil is firmly secured down, you can apply a texture paste. Now, I would go for a smooth paste and not one with a grit and one that is opaque white, not a transparent one or even another coloured one. Definitely white is the best colour for you to then show up your inks afterwards nice and bright and bold. So once that is all stenciled through, allow it to dry. Ensure you clean your stencil as well because you don't want that texture paste getting into the brushes when you're ink blending. You want to place your stencil back over the top of the design once it's completely dry and now you can do your ink blending. Now you can layer your inks, you can mix them and you can use the white underneath to create highlights. And as you can see, we've got beautiful bold colour on top of the black cardstock. Now tip number four, we've all been there, we have gone and ink blended a background or a panel, then we've stamped on it with our clear embossing ink, put the powder on and the powder has stuck everywhere. So I'm going to show you how to avoid that, but most importantly, if you do do it because you just don't expect the ink to take quite so long to dry, how to fix it. So first of all, prevention is always going to be better than cure. So once you've ink blended your panel, you may have used your heat gun on it to warm it up and hopefully fully dry it. Take an embossing powder. Now take one that's going to be nice and contrasting against your background and spread it all over the area that you're going to place it when you come to do your embossing. Now, once that's fully dry and you can tap this off easily, then you know that you can go ahead and do your stamping and of course then do your heat embossing without any little specks flying anywhere. But sometimes we just don't think ahead. So what do you do if it's too late, you've stamped your image and then put your embossing on? And I can see here that I've got some bits still sticking to the ink and the image just isn't very clear. So all I'm going to do is set this aside. I'm going to come back to that in about 10 minutes, tap the back and see if any more powder comes off. OK, so let's give this a bit more of a flick there. Perfect. All I've done is allowed that ink to dry. So tip number five is about foiling without a foiling machine. Now I have got a complete video on this and I'll make sure that is shared up here for you. But if you haven't seen it already, here's a quick overview. This is the Magnolia Halftone Stamp and Die Set. I love it, but I'd love the look of it foiled. So I've cut it out and I'm going to put it onto a dark cardstock so you can really see. Now this particular tip also has an additional tip or hack in it as well and this is one of my favourites that I'm asked about a lot and it's about gluing down intricate die cuts for a technique similar to this. So rather than trying to glue all of this with um, a nozzle that's maybe too large, I'm going to instead apply my glue with a brayer. So onto a resistant mat, something that's going to protect my surface, I'm going to apply a little bit of wet glue. This is a glue that I would use for sticking die cuts down. And I'm going to take a brayer and just roll that into the glue. So it's a nice thin layer. Then I'm going to brayer this all over the reverse of the die cut. I can now go ahead and apply that to my project wherever I want it. And as you can see, everything is stuck down. But you may be thinking, well, that's not really a tip. That's just gluing a foiled piece of cardstock onto another piece because that wasn't the tip. This is how to make it look like foiling. Now, you'll notice that with the glued on die cut, we've got this raised area. So it looks like it's glued on. Now, with real foiling, that would be completely smooth to the surface of the cardstock. And that's what we're going to do. So we're going to bring in our die cutting machine and I'm going to place a rubber mat onto the base plate of my machine. This is a thin rubber mat. So it's one that is going to go through in the die cutting sandwich without having to take any other plates out. Then I'm going to place my piece of foiled cardstock or not yet almost foiled onto the die cutting plate there, onto the rubber mat with the design facing upwards. 
put my top plate on and run this through. There's no dye in here. So what this is doing is adding pressure to the design and it's pressing that mirror card design, the die cut into the cardstock and flattening it out. So now we've got something that looks more like foiling. If I turn this on the reverse and hold it up at the correct angle, you can just about see the emboss from where the cardstock's been pressed into the paper. That looks like expensive foiling and is absolutely beautiful. Now tip number six, are you ever scared of stamping directly onto your project purely because you may get the positioning wrong? You may stamp it and think actually it just doesn't look right but it's too late. So I'm going to show you a tip for just positioning your stamps before you commit to stamping them. And we're going to be utilising the backing sheet that comes with your stamps. And I'm not sure on this card whether I'm going to place it at the top, at the bottom or just under the telephones. I don't know what's going to look best, so this is going to help me. Now taking this to my card, I can lay it in a few different places and decide which one looks best before I commit to stamping on it. But if you don't like to do this, you could always stamp onto a piece of acetate with a solvent ink, let that dry and then do the same thing on your project. Now tip number seven is about cutting small dies. You know when sometimes it's an intricate die and you miss a little bit from the middle and you need to really carefully kind of position that back into the die and you know it's going to move when you run it back through again to cut it fully. This is going to help you. So make sure you've kept the waist. So what I'm going to do is position my die cut back into the waist there and it should all slot in really nicely. Take yourself a piece of low tack tape just across the back there, hold it in place. Then we can put our die on top. Now, if you give this a wiggle, that should then slot back in place where it needs to be. Nothing's going to move. So you can go ahead and die cut this. You can put your metal shims in. You can turn it if you want to and get the perfect cut without accidentally cutting any of the little ends off. Tip number eight is all about ink blending when it's just not working for you. It could be because of the colours you've chosen. They're not quite blending. Now, many of you would have seen my Distress Ink and Oxide blending series. I'll make sure that's put up here for you to go and check out afterwards. But if you haven't picked up enough tips and tricks from that series, this one may help you. So as an example on this panel, I've blended blue and yellow and I've purposely made sure they didn't blend together really beautifully and seamlessly. So what would you do if this happened? Would you just throw this away? Absolutely not. We are going to fix this so you can use it on your project. What you need to do is consult a colour wheel. We're going to find the two colours that you've used from anywhere on the colour wheel. So I've got my blue and yellow and I'm going to go to the colour that's directly between the two and this would be this lovely bright green. I've chosen myself another blending ink that is similar and I'm going to blend a small amount of this through the centre of my two ink blended pieces. So just a small amount on your brush and I'm just going to blend in small circles through the centre here. So just going along that centre line where the two meet in small circles then I'm going to lift that up into the blue. I'm going to wipe off my brush in case there's any blue ink on it and then I'm going to repeat going into the yellow as well. Because these colours are closer to each other on the colour wheel, you'll find they blend much easier and that has really made your blending much neater. Now, if you're still not entirely happy with your ink blending, a little bit of water can go a long way. I'm just going to do a mist over this project. Allow that to dry, either air dry or take your heat gun to it and these beautiful watermarks will cover any imperfections. Now tip number nine is about getting a little bit messy. Are you scared to use the smoosh technique because you're, you don't want it to go wrong or have you already tried it and it's just made a mess everywhere? This little tip is going to help you 
prevent things from going wrong. So when we do smooshing with our blending inks, it's very easy to put too much ink on. It seeps over the side and it just goes where we don't want it. And it's one big mess. So my tip here is to cut your acetate or whatever you're using to smoosh with into a much smaller piece and apply it that way. The ink is never going to travel further than the edges of your plastic so you've got much more control. So this time I'm just going to smear a little ink on there, a little water and start with a smaller panel of ink and I can then move this around where I want it much more easily. So if you were aiming to only cover a small amount, you've got so much more control, you can put it exactly where you want it. And this way you can also layer up colours too. And my final tip for you is to check out these other videos from my channel because these are all covering lots of different hacks from die cutting, stamping, heat embossing, you'll find them all there. So I hope this has helped you. Leave me a comment if it has. And of course, don't forget to save for future reference. Take care, everybody. I'll see you again soon.